Good morning, and thank you for joining us for our Pentecost worship service from the Mount Zion African Methodist Episcopal Church, located at 1305 East Chevy Street in Florence, South Carolina. We're ever so grateful for your continued support of this ministry and know that we are here for you to assist you with your spiritual well-being as we lift up the name of Jesus through word and song. Myself, along with Brother William Wilson, would like to give a big shout out and thank you to the men and women of Mount Zion who came out on yesterday and assisted us as we distributed more than 1,000 boxes of food to this community and the surrounding churches. Because of your unselfish service and the donation of your time, we were able to complete our distribution in about three hours. Again, thank you, Mount Zion, and all of those persons from our community who also pitched in to lend a helping hand. Be reminded that at 4 p.m. this afternoon, the Florence Dillon District will conduct its Pentecost worship service on the grounds of the Bethel AME Church in Darlington, South Carolina. You're invited to come and bring your lawn chairs, or you may sit in your vehicles as we celebrate the day of Pentecost with a worship celebration. We urge you to continue to be safe and to protect yourself from this virus that has plagued us for the past year. Personally, I still wear my mask, and I just want to encourage everyone to please get the vaccine that is available to you as soon as possible. The Reverend James C. Brown will come and lead us in prayer and the read the scripture. Dr. Fossell Jackson Doja will come with our health moments, followed by a selection from the choir and then the morning's message. Daddy, thank you for one more day. Thank you for brand new mercies. Thank you for life, health, and strength. Thank you for just being Savior, healer, deliverer, friend, joy, peace, and our strength. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you that, that you thought it was not just enough to die for, for us and to get up with all power in your hands. But that 50 days later, you made a promise and you fulfilled that promise. And that promise we celebrate today. Thank you for your Holy Ghost. Thank you for your presence. So just as you are Emmanuel, God with us, with Jesus, now you are God with us, with each and every one of us who believe and receives you as Savior and Lord. And so as we gathered in this place, Holy Spirit, please know that you are welcome. Revive us again, fill each heart with our love. 
May our souls be rekindled with fire from above. So our souls and our lives will say, Hallelujah, thy in the glory. Hallelujah, amen. God, if we ever needed you before, we need you now. So we ask that you stir within us, God. Stir up the gifts within us. Stir up love. Stir up peace. Stir up hope. Stir up every promise that you've ever spoken to us that we will hold on to the very end to realize that you're not like man. Whatever you said, you shall do. So God, we say thank you for the healings that are taking place, for the deliverance that are taking place. God, for restoration that's taking place, for reconciliation that's taking place. And yes, God, we thank you for repentance because we have not done everything right all the time. God, repentance, God, for as a nation that claims to know you but has not lived our testament, lived our declarations, God, so God, we pray that you create in us continually a clean heart, O oh God. Renew within us a right spirit. That when people see us and they know that we know you, they will see you in us. Live in us, Jesus, and have your way. And in this place, have your way and be glorified is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Our scripture for the morning comes from Acts, the book of Acts chapter 2. And I'll be reading from verses 1 through 5, Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. And I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly there was a sound from heaven, like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames of tongues of, or fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and begun speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. At that time, there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and the living of his word. Good morning, Mount Zion. I miss everybody, and I'm so, so ready to see all of you. Now, this month's um, topic is regarding mental illness. Now, if I had thought about this earlier, I would have really called on some of my mental health specialists in the church, but it slipped up on me. So I let them slide this year, but I definitely would not let them slide on next year. So we're going to talk about depression and anxiety. And I discussed this topic today in the midst of this global pandemic. The global prevalence of depression and anxiety is about 24% and about 21% respectively. According to the CDC, the US, in the US, anxiety and depression disorders increased from 34% to 41.5%. The largest increase was seen in adults 18 to 29 years old. With this increase, we have seen an increase in homicides, suicides, and the development of new mental health illnesses other than depression and anxiety. We know most of this is due to the isolation that has developed due to COVID-19 prevention measures of social distancing. It has kept us from family, friends, and our communities. It's also due to the amount of death um, and illnesses that has plagued us during the pandemic. Additionally, the political atmosphere that plagued us most of last year also increased the anxiety level in a lot of us. Some of us have been blessed enough to manage and maintain um, a large portion, I'm sorry, some of us have, have been blessed and able to manage a lot of this despite what was going on. But many persons in our population continue to suffer. So here are some tips to help you manage. 
First and foremost, take care of yourself. Eat healthy, well-balanced meals. Exercise regularly. Get plenty of sleep. Avoid excessive alcohol, tobacco, and substance abuse that has increased so much during this pandemic. Continue with the routine preventive measures. You know, the colon cancer screening, your breast cancer screening, your vaccination, continue those things because that too will lessen your anxiety. Because I do see patients come back and say, you know, I'm real worried because I wasn't able to go to the hospital to get my tests done. But continue with those. Talk to your primary care doctor about scheduling those preventive um, routine measures. Connect with others. I was on a panel with South Carolina State Epidemiologist, Dr. Linda Bell, and she asked us to refrain from using the term social distancing, but instead use the term physically distancing. You see, although we cannot physically see each other, we have ways of connecting, such as our phones and our computers, as we are doing now. So connect with others. I need this on my own self. Take time to unwind. It will do you good. Connect with your church family and other support groups. Consider getting together with your vaccinated family members. So if you have depression and anxiety before the pandemic, seek medical help. Talk with your primary care physician. Connect with PD, PD Mental Health or wherever you are, whatever mental health facilities that are available. Connect with them. If you developed depression and anxiety during this pandemic, hold on. Hold on, because I believe a breakthrough is coming. We can all see the numbers dropping. We see our deaths are at its all-time low. So hold on. Hold on. God is smiling on us, and I do believe that we will get together soon. Get your vaccinations. Go on walks in non-crowded areas and take a deep breath. If you're in a walk area, you're worried about someone not vaccinated, then take your mask with you and have your mask handy. Attend events that are outdoor where it's not crowded so you can get some fresh air and enjoy. I still ask you to carry a mask with you. Travel to safe areas and take your mask with you. And as always, I ask that you continue to seek God's guidance as he helps us through this perilous time. Mount Zion, I believe something is coming and I believe we will see each other soon. And I hope this will help to lessen our anxiety and depression that has worsened during this pandemic. Thank you very much.
of my heart be acceptable in thy sight O Lord my strength and my redeemer amen in the book of Acts the Acts of the Apostles the second chapter verses 1 through 5 and when the day of Pentecost was fully come they were all with one accord in one place and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation, under heaven. In our text, we see that another Jewish celebration is taking place, the Feast of Pentecost. Pentecost was the annual Jewish agricultural feast that took place 50 days after the Passover to celebrate the harvest of the crops. This festival was held in Jerusalem and it was attended by God-fearing Jews from every Nation And the Bible tells us that on the day of Pentecost, they were all in one place with one accord. But while they were all on one accord, all of a sudden there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind and it filled the house where they were. Not only did it fill the house, but the Bible also says that they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And when they were filled with the Holy Ghost, the Spirit allowed them to speak in other tongues. And in verse 5 of this text, the Bible is intentional in saying that dwelling in Jerusalem and attending this festival were devout Christians from every nation under heaven. In other words, for those folk who say that the speaking in tongues wasn't real, these were folk from every nation under heaven heaven, which means that nobody knew one another, which actually shows us that if the power of the Holy Ghost can allow folk from other places to speak in each other's tongues, the Holy Spirit is sure enough for real. As I pondered over this text, my mind began to take me in places that I had not anticipated going as I was writing this message. And, and I thought about the fact that in this country, especially, it usually takes some kind of tragedy for us to get on one accord. I've lived in the United States of America for all of my 60 years, and I've witnessed and I've been a recipient of what the division and racism in America looks like. I thought about the attack on America on 9-11. And, and my mind reflected back to Bethel Amy Church in Conway where we were sitting in the opening worship service of the Northeast South Carolina Annual Conference. But I remember the unity in this nation that those attacks spawned all over America after the Twin Towers came tumbling down. This country at that time was probably more united than I can remember at any other time in my life. 
Everybody was talking about USA Strong. But before long, after the hurt, and after the pain, and after the shock had worn off, it was business as usual. America went back to being the land of racism and bigotry. We returned to being the land where it was the rich versus the poor and the white versus black or anybody that's other than white. Back to the country that had been divided in so many aspects of our lives. Then I thought about the Black Lives Matter movement that was a result of so many black lives being taken at the hand of police officers who just killed folk because they knew that they'd get away with it. Another instance where we saw people of all races who had seen enough of these senseless killings band together for the cause of humanity crossing racial and ethnic barriers to protest that which was wrong. Yet another instance where it took a string of tragedies to bring folk together for a common cause. And my mind has to wonder how long it will be before this movement too is forgotten about and we again go to business as usual, although I pray so much that we never will. So as we, as Christians, enjoy this beautiful Pentecost day, and, and as we pray for the Holy Spirit to fall afresh on God's people because we know that the Holy Spirit has power, I want to suggest to you this morning that the challenge for us is simply to stay together. In 1971, Al Green released a hit song entitled Let's Stay Together. In this song, he said, let's stay together. Together, loving you forever, whether times are good or bad or happy or sad. If we look at our text, all of the folk attending the festival in Jerusalem were indeed in one place. They were all in Jerusalem. But the reality is there still had to be somewhat of chaos because these folk were not able to communicate with anyone other than those who spoke their language while believing and while knowing that there were folk there from every nation under the heaven. They all may have been Christians. They all may have been in one place, but they were still separated by language and culture and the list goes on and on. And they were all on one accord because they had come to give thanks at this celebration. And it took them being descended upon by the Holy Ghost for all of the barriers, the totality of the barriers, to come fully down and they come fully together. As we look at our world, our state, our nation, our communities, and in many instances our church, I just came by to serve notice on you that we are divided because there are too many separate agendas. And the truth is that there are times that we do come together. But the problem is our unity is way too short-lived. Let me give you an example. <clears throat> we recently celebrated Easter as a congregation and ecumenically through our sunrise service, and on Easter Sunday morning, I don't care what's going on in our lives, we all get on one accord as we celebrate Jesus' resurrection when he conquered death, hell, and the grave. On Easter, we are together celebrating what God has done for all of us. But how long is it after Easter? before the devil comes back into our circles and folk forget about what we celebrated. Folk forget about the common tie that ought to bind us together forever. Forget that Jesus loved us all the same and we forget that he got up for me just like he did for you. Just came by to tell you this morning that the fact that Jesus loves us all the same ought to be reason enough by itself for us to stay together. And if we really think about it, it's the same way at Christmas time. At Christmas time, 
We speak to folk that we have overlooked all year long when that Christmas feeling comes over us. And the reality is that's a good thing because we need to put foolishness out of the way. But if we can come together at Easter and at Christmas and after 9-11 and after the murder of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and Walter Scott and Trayvon Martin and the list goes on and on, then somebody please tell me why can't we stay together? What does it take for us to understand that divided and separated we have no power to ward off the devil or anything else. But I'm so glad this morning. But I'm so glad that when we get on one accord, I'm glad that when we let the Holy Spirit know, it, we, then when we get on one accord, we are letting the Holy Spirit know that we are ready for it to descend on us and give us the power that we need to overcome everything that separates us. Didn't Jesus tell his disciples to stay in Jerusalem until the Holy Spirit came with their power? Without the power of the Holy Spirit, they were not equipped to deal with Satan or the world. And we've got to understand that as long as we are divided, we're going to remain in this hell that we've created on earth because the Holy Spirit only comes when we're on one accord. And without the Holy Spirit, we too might as well stay in Jerusalem. But when we stay together, and when the Holy Ghost shows up, Lord knows we get power from on high. Power to combat our prejudices, our prejudices, power to combat our racism, power to combat sexism and classism and every other ism, power to ward off the devil, power to run and not be weary, power to walk and not faint, power to wait on the Lord and to be of good courage in the middle of our waiting, power to trust in the Lord with all of our heart. Power to lean not unto our own understanding and power to acknowledge him in all of our ways. Yeah. My brothers and sisters, this is the day of Pentecost. This is the day when they were all in one place on one accord. And this is the day that the Holy Spirit filled their room and sat upon each and every one of them. But the challenge for us is still to stay together. In spite of our differences, in spite of the challenges that we face, the Holy Spirit still has all of the power necessary to unite us. Let's just make sure that we stay together. God bless you.
extend to you the invitation to Christian discipleship. How many of you want to be able to say something got a hold of me? The beauty of it is that you don't have to go to a meeting at night. All you got to do is get your heart right. All you have to do is create a space in your heart and in your life that makes sure the Holy Ghost knows it's welcome in your life. We open the doors of the church to you. We offer you the invitation to Christian discipleship. We ask you to reach out to our ministry in our chat box, chat box in our Facebook page, through email, whatever mechanism that you have available to you. Let us know. But more than anything, let the Holy Spirit know that it's welcome in your life. We thank you for your participation and for worshiping with us. We would simply ask that God would bless you and keep you until we shall meet again. The Lord's name be praised. Hallelujah and amen. Quiet. Yes,